hands up if you've ever made it to Tuk Tuk Tuk. Well, Dave Bedini has. The author, musician, and journalist went north, way north, like almost off the map north, living the kind of experience few of us never get firsthand. But that is the beauty of books. If you can't physically get there, you can feel transported through the power of words on a page, which is what Bedini is doing in his latest book, Midnight Light. He is here with us in studio this morning. Good to have you here. I am jealous at how you made your way up north because for a long time as a news anchor, I was always pitching to be able to read at the stations in the north just to see the part of the country I might otherwise not There's get still to. time. They'll, I'm sure they'd be happy to. I will talk to her. somebody after the okay. show. In the meantime, you had a brilliant idea to pitch yourself as a short-term uh, writer at the newspaper in Yellowknife, which is called? It's called The Yellowknifer. The Yellowknifer. I love that. Yeah. It's a great, it's, I mean, I didn't really pitch myself. I just picked up the phone and cold called them and asked them if I could come and work for them. And they said, why would you want to do that? And I was like, well, I, Yellowknife seems like an intriguing place to me. And it was kind of neat, the idea of going as far north as possible yes. to get a gig. And, but the north accommodates you. Like, if you want to go there and do whatever you want to do, they will uh, they'll say yes. Well, you know, you didn't just go there and sort of fill space and fill time yeah. and take beautiful pictures. You actually broke a story. I did, I, yeah. I broke the story that the local KFC had closed. How did you get your tip? It's big news. <laughs> I, think I, I think I might have found it on social media. Somebody else had, tw somebody had tweeted it out. But, but it, it caused shockwaves in the community because uh, people love their chicken. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, people from the communities would snow, snowmobile in and fly in and buy dozens of buckets of chicken and bring them back to the communities, freeze them. And, uh, and then uh, thaw them when they wanted to, when there was a wedding or a social. Really? And so without the KFC, wow. there was a huge hole. But that was my big achievement, you're right, as a reporter working for the Yellowknifer in 2015. That was your, that that was your was Pulitzer moment. Yes. Uh, tell us about John McFadden. He is a character in this book, but tell us, uh, tell us about his backstory. Yeah, well, actually, it's ironic that we're in this building because he actually once worked for CP24 and around in this area, and he, I think he was... Uh, so he'd, he'd gone through many, many media outlets in Toronto before he realized the only place he could go to work was Yellowknife. Uh, but while he was up there, he, um, he held the RCMP accountable for a lot of the ways that they operate in the North. And um, so he was a bit of a thorn in their sides. Um, and he stood up to them, basically. Um, and he was then uh, arrested for obstruction of justice, and there was... a. Uh, seven-month trial, which pitted the town and the paper against the RCMP. Wow. And the stakes, the stakes were Yellowknife. And the stakes were basically the ability uh, for the Yellowknife or to, to write freely about, about life there. Um, and, and it was a thrilling trial, and I followed John, and he's in town today, actually. He's going to come to our launch tonight at the Gladstone. Um, but he was a great character, and he was also the perfect character because he said, you can write whatever you want to write about me. And he was a classic, hard, he is a classic hard-boiled reporter, the kind of, that you don't really encounter anymore, mm. coming from a different tradition, very dogged, very determined, and a really good reporter. Uh, Susan Chaffee is another great yeah. character in this book. Tell us a bit about her. Yeah, we went, we met Susan. I went, I, I would follow John to go uh, on all these assignments um, and all the stuff that was happening in, in Yellowknife. And uh, Susan's uh, uncle's home, maybe her father's home, had been vandalized in Dilo, which is the indigenous community outside of Yellowknife there. And um, in the car there, she would, she was show, pantomiming in the back seat how she would beat up dudes on the street. When she would get encounters outside of bars, she told us her technique. Wow. Uh, she'd punch them in the throat and take away their air. She was a fascinating, and so, so I was fascinated by this woman, and then we went to breakfast together, and she told me she was the first fishing guide ever on Great Slave Lake. Wow. The key to her and the key to a lot of people I met there was everybody had fascinating stories of their life in the North, and the kind of stories that you would never know had you not gone there, had I not gone there to, to meet them. There have been songs and poems and books written about how the North will change you, so how did the North change you? There actually haven't been songs, books, or poems written about Yellowknife, which is one of the reasons I yeah. wanted to write this book. Um, but it changed me by just expanding my idea of what Canada is and what it mm. is to be a northern person. And what does that mean? I think it means a northern person is someone who has the, whose land and whose um, setting and whose history and life get, still gives them the opportunity to dream. And there's very little cynicism. I mean, the sky and the land is so expansive, you actually have to fill it with the dream. And I think the north is one of the last frontiers where, 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 um, where dreams can be manifest because you're not under the hot microscope, you're not under the lens of city life, you're removed. Mm. You can try a lot of different things. You can 
You can try different ways of um, writing, different ways of policing, education, housing. All of those things can be experimented with up there um, uh, with, with the end of trying to improve things and, and change things. For those of us who did not get up to work on yes. the Yellow Knife or, or as far north as, as north can be, you can read Midnight Light. Thanks for being here. Totally, today, Ken. Thanks so much. Pleasure.